Want to know the latest in soccer? Then listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast from MLS, the World Cup, and the Premier League. We've got you covered. The latest updates, the hottest matches, and news on the league's top players. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. David Beckham scores the goal. Listen now. All right, and welcome to the GSMC Soccer Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. And as always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. This is the first time in a month we have no World Cup to talk about. It's pretty disappointing, honestly. All right, what a tournament that was. But either way, now we must move on. We're now at the point where we get preseason matches, okay? Sometimes you'll look up schedule. All right, you'll see a PSG versus Manchester City or some game like that. You'll get excited. All right, because, I mean, the last few summers, we've seen their top players playing. But you look up at the schedule, you see they're playing, and then you get sad. Because you realize we have the World Cup, and all those guys are on their vacations now, and pretty much relaxing. So now you're basically seeing about their 17-year-old player who is probably going to get loaned out to some second division English team or whatever. All right. So with the, due to the World Cup, as great as it was, now we get preseason matches where we aren't seeing necessarily all of the top players. All right. But we'll get through it. Okay. Premier League starts, what, first, second week of August, I think it is. Okay. So we're close. All right. Soccer starting up. We had Liga MX starting up this past weekend. All right. And I mean, Liga MX... That's one where you got to look past the flaws of it in order to appreciate it. Okay. We had a game where Toluca was playing. I can't remember who they were playing, but nonetheless, all right. I can't remember exactly the team they were playing, but the opposing team that they were playing thinks they score a last minute goal to tie the game up. All right. It's like the 90th minute. They're celebrating, not realizing that the sideline ref has raised his flag for offsides. Toluca takes the offside free kick, dribbles it down the field, and scores on an empty net. Okay. I think there's video of it out there somewhere. Check it out. It's Liga MX. Like I said, that's the point. You got to get past the flaws. It's entertaining, but there is flaws. It's not the, it's not the how do they say, beautiful game. It's not as beautiful as they say. Okay. But nonetheless, it is football, and it is fun to watch. All right. But either way, let me tell you what we're talking about today. <laughs> All right. So, Mezu Ozil and Germany have seemed to, I mean, they don't, Ozil's not playing for Germany ever again. I, I'm just going to say that. I don't, there's no way Mezu Ozil ever puts on another Germany shirt again. Okay. Absolutely no way. We'll be talking about that for this segment. Okay, we're also going to talk about Liverpool. They got a goalie. All right, got Allison from Roma. We'll be talking about Manchester United. Okay, is it time to not panic, but more so worry a bit? I mean, they played the worst team in the NMLS, the San Jose Earthquakes, and look pretty bad. All right, we'll be talking about that. And then as we always do, we'll be talking about anything else going on in the world of soccer slash football, whatever you want to call it. All right, but this whole Ozil situation is a bit of a sticky one. I mean, it is. it does dip into the politics side of things. I'm not really too into that stuff because, I mean, it's just a mess. All right, but either way, I guess this all stems from Ozil taking a picture with the president, whatever you want to call him, of Turkey. Okay. Mm, background check a little bit. Mesut Ozil is from Turkey. He was born in Turkey. Nonetheless, was a German immigrant. Got a citizenship there. And that's how he became a German player. Okay. 
So he took the picture with the president of Turkey, President Erdogan. Okay, Erdogan. And that caused some problems with Germany. Okay. And, I mean, it's just one where it's... I mean, I feel like Ozil, his whole point from this whole situation is that he feels that he's been treated poorly and has had to deal with racism and all that because of the picture he took. Okay. And of course, I mean, you got Germany reject, like just pretty much saying, no, that's not the case or anything like that. But nonetheless, I mean, this is just the way Ozil feels. Okay. He put out a statement. He put out one whole statement. It's about three different parts. Okay. I mean, one is, I mean, it's different subjects for each. Okay. But basically, he talks about how it's been the first page of his statement because he released it on Twitter if you want to check that out. I think it is, uh, is yeah, it's Bezit Ozil 1088. Okay, if you want to check it out. But either way, I mean, he basically just explains it. And I mean, it seems that, and again, I'm not into the whole politics side of things or anything like that. So I'm not as informed, I guess, as the next guy. But either way, this Turkish president isn't necessarily the greatest guy from what I've read. Okay. And Germany didn't really like it. And this is what it's all coming from. And Ozil also talks about the fact that he feels that he's treated differently differently, because of the fact that he is a dual national. Okay, it's kind of like the U.S. They got your American players and all that from the MLS. But when Klinsmann was coaching, they did have the dual nationals from Germany. Okay. And Ozil's whole thing is basically when they win and he plays well, he's German. When they don't, he's Turkish. Okay. And, I mean, that's got to be a terrible feeling. Basically, you're only accepted if you do something for them. Okay. And, I mean, Lukaku said the same thing with him. Alright. Same with Benzema. He said the same thing. And now it's just a point where, I mean, it seems that we're beyond fixing this. Okay, because, I mean, you even got the president of Bayern Munich, okay, saying that basically Ozil has, and his name is Uli Honus, okay, Bayern's president, basically says that he's been useless, like, just paraphrasing, basically saying he's been useless for Germany, hasn't done anything the last few years or anything like that, says he has been, I mean, I can't say this on the podcast, nonetheless, it is a curse word, and it does start with an H, or it starts with an S, actually, all right? You could put two and two together and figure out which word it is, and I'm sure if you go looking, researching into this whole little feud, whatever you want to call it, you'll find it, all right? But anyway, it says he's been terrible, okay? And it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's, it's crazy, okay, how Byron's president is... It's just going at him. I mean, quotes says that his last tackle won, he won was before the 2014 World Cup, and now he is hiding himself in his poor performances behind this photo. Uh, another quote is 35 million social media followers that, of course, do not actually exist in the real world. And sure, uh, Ozil has been playing exceptionally, exceptionally when he successfully finds his man with a square ball. I mean, the dude is just talking about just random stuff, just going at it, just basically attacking them, okay, and like I said, when you see stuff like this, this is beyond repairing, okay, this is a relationship that's not going to get fixed, all right, and I mean, Ozil, last couple of years, yeah, he has dipped in form, but the Bayern president pretty much going at him this way is like, besides the whole issue, the issue isn't about his play. Okay, the issue is about the picture that he took. And obviously people got different views on it or whatnot, but either way, I mean, this is something I feel maybe could have been avoided from both sides. And I feel that, I mean, it's just, maybe, because remember how there was reports of there possibly being like turmoil within the German team and all that at the World Cup? Let me see, when, is, when was this picture taken? 
All right. Because, I mean, if this picture was taken before that, then that could be what was going on here. And it did seem like Ozil and Germany, well, Germany more so with Ozil. Okay, I think it was the German president of the national team who basically said that maybe they made a mistake leaving Sané and bringing on Ozil. It seems that Ozil has been the scapegoat for the last couple of years. Okay, for Arsenal and for Germany. All right. And it's a bit unfair. Like I said, has his form dipped a bit last couple of years? Sure. But as far as his play, I think he's still he's still a solid player. Okay. So, I mean, it's a whole different thing. But either way, like I said, with all this going on, I mean, Ozil released three statements. Okay, and it just seems like now it's Germany going against Ozil. Okay, there's been a couple of players ha- that have showed their support for him, but, I mean, the majority of them has pretty much stayed silent. I mean, this is an issue where you speak out your mind. Germany could just tell you, yeah, go home. You're not playing for us again. Okay, so I do, I guess, understand that. But either way, I mean, this is an odd situation. Okay. An odd situation, but nonetheless, I mean, I I think we've seen, this World Cup was the last we've seen Ozil playing for Germany. All right. Leroy Sané says that he needs to just take some time to relax a bit and all that. But nonetheless, yeah, Ozil's not coming back. There's absolutely no way. All right. So, I mean, that's all I got to say about that. Next up, we're going to be talking about Manchester United, so stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Are you looking to get your college football fix? Looking to get the latest news on your favorite school's team? The GSMC College Football Podcast is your ticket to all things college football. Join us as we talk college football from the national championship, the college rivalries, the bowl game, to the Heisman Trophy, to which conference is the best. We've got you covered for the Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, the Pac-12, ACC, and everything in between. Download the GSMC College Football Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Alright, and welcome back to the GSMC Soccer Podcast. We spent that first segment basically just, I guess, giving my thoughts on the whole Ozil and Germany situation. Okay. Either way, though, now we talk Manchester United. Okay. So, United, I mean, just to put it into simple terms, have been... Basically, underwhelming since Sir Alex Ferguson left that team. Okay. With him coaching them, managing them, best club, one of the best clubs in the world, constantly winning trophies and always competing with the best. Now, they're not even the best team in their own in Manchester. Okay. They've gone through Moyes. They've gone through Van Hall. Now they're with Mourinho. Okay, and I ne- haven't really been the biggest fan of Jose Mourinho since he's been at Manchester United. Okay. I mean, honestly, comparing him to Moyes and Van Hall, has this Manchester United team really taken any steps forward? I mean, they sure, they finished second. In the table last season. But nonetheless. I mean. Did they really impress you. Too much. Alright. And I mean. There's just a point. Where I don't think they've really moved forward. Since Ferguson left. Okay. You play the San Jose Earthquakes. In your preseason match. Worst team in the MLS. And. I mean. I know you don't have your. How do you say. You don't have your first team. Or anything like that. Or the players you'd like to have. But either way. You're Manchester United. Okay, and you're drawing 0-0 with 
the worst team in the MLS. And when I say worst team in the MLS, I don't even think that does it like a serv- like a, that's, does, that does it as a service. They're much worse than you could expect talking about the earthquakes. Okay. But either way, I mean, like I said, I just I don't feel Marino's done well with Manchester United. Okay. His nickname is the special one, I think it is that they call him. But, I mean, there hasn't been anything special going on with Manchester. They haven't won a league title or anything like that. I mean, they won the Europa League, but you're Manchester United. Are you really happy with a Europa League title? Okay. They disappointed in Champions League this season. And, I mean, honestly, for me... It seems like a lot of their big name players that have come in haven't really performed up to expectations. And honestly, I mean, I, I blame Mourinho on that one. Okay? If it's one player, then yeah, it's on the player. But if it's multiple players who aren't really performing, then it's something a little bit deeper. At least I think, personally. Okay? I mean, Lukaku, I think we could both agree, we could all agree that compared to his seasons over with Everton, he did have a down year with Manchester United. Okay. Let me see how many goals he scored last season. Talking about Lukaku. So he scored 16. All right. I don't... Let me see. Was that... Was that top five in the Premier League? I don't believe so. He was actually sixth in the Premier League with goals scored. All right. Coming behind Mo Salah, who finished number one with 32. Kane with 30. Aguero with 21. Vardy with 20. And then Sterling with 18. Okay. I mean... I'm assuming that Manchester United brought him in to pretty much be amongst the top with Kane and Salah. All right. So Lukaku was a guy who, I mean, had a not too decent of a season. All right. Compared to his form with Everton. Alexis Sanchez, he came midway through the season. So this one doesn't really, I guess, you can't really look too much into this one because he didn't have a full season with the team. But nonetheless, when he switched over from Arsenal to United, Alexis Sanchez was invisible. Okay. Did nothing with that team. Martial is a guy who he's kept on the bench when, I mean, in reality, Martial should be playing a lot more. Okay, Martial's trying to leave, but I don't believe, I don't think Ed Woodward wants him to leave. All right, the man who pretty much spends the big money out there. All right, I think Marino's fine with him going. Pogba with Juventus was the arguably the best midfielder in the world, or at least amongst them. Okay, United, can you say he's been that? No. All right, so that's already another player there. All right, and it's just a point where, I mean, I just think Mourinho's outdated, okay? I think it's time to move on from him. I mean, there's a point where, you, like I said, you're Manchester United, okay? Sir Alex Ferguson kept them up, winning titles and all that for years on top of years on top of years. I think he, from like 83 or whenever he would be, first became the manager, like 83 or 85, I think, up until he retired. Okay? Just pure dominance. And like I said, with Mourinho coming in, I mean, he's supposed to be the special one and all that, but have we really seen a difference from for, from Van Hall and Moyes to now Mourinho? I don't think we have. Okay? And I mean... Is a point where, if you're Manchester United, okay, yeah, you finished second. But how happy can you be about it if you're not winning trophies? Okay. And like I said, I could care less about a Europa League trophy. That's below Manchester United. Okay. Manchester United should be a team who, they should be as good as City right now. Okay. Talking about their standards and all that. All right. There should never be a time where Manchester United is basically another team in the Premier League. Like another team in the top four. Okay. They should be up there with the Madrids and all that. They make enough money to be up there with that. I mean, they're one of the, I think they're the second most, they might be the most valuable club in the world. Okay. But nonetheless, I mean, as far as their preseason performances and all that, I wouldn't really... Think too much of it. I mean, of course, drawing 0-0 with the San Jose Earthquakes isn't necessarily the greatest result. Okay? And it does raise some cause for concern. 
But nonetheless, I mean, you have to Premier League start next month. There's still time for them to bring in players through the transfer window. I know they need some outside backs. All right, first and foremost. Okay. But nonetheless, I mean, we'll see if Manchester United can pick it up this season. Okay, I think they'll finish top four and all that, but there's a point where finishing top four isn't good enough, especially for a club like this. Okay, over in Madrid, they'll fire you if you don't win a trophy. All right. Doesn't matter what else you did. Doesn't matter if you finished top four. Doesn't matter if you finished second. Doesn't matter if you lost in the final. If you don't win a trophy, you're probably going to get fired. All right. That is a bit of a risky type of managerial, how do you say, process as far as bringing guys in and all that. But nonetheless, I mean, it works in Madrid. Okay. So we'll see what United end up doing this season. Let's see, who do they open up with in the Premier League for their first match? I think it's Leicester, if I'm not mistaken. All right. And I mean, right now, I think you got to say in the Premier League that that um, City are the favorites. Okay. But yeah, they are playing Leicester City in their first match, August 10th in the Premier League. But nonetheless, yeah, I mean, City are the favorites to win it again. Okay. And I mean, if there was ever a time for United maybe to win the title, it'd be this season too. All right. Tottenham haven't really made any moves so far in the transfer window. They've been pretty abysmal as far as that goes. Okay. Chelsea fired their manager. I don't think they'll be as good as they want to be. Arsenal's a team who is slowly coming back up, I'd say. All right. I like the moves they've made so far, and it seems like they got a nice, decent plan. All right, and then there's Liverpool, who we'll be talking about in the next segment. But either way, I'd say that as besides City, United, it should be theirs. Okay. But either way, now we have to wait and see. I mean, exactly who Mourinho's going to be bringing in if he does any more. All right. But I mean, Mourinho just seems like a stubborn manager who it's his way or the highway. And like I said, I just don't think that really works out now. Okay. I think it's a point where Mourinho has to adapt with the way the game is going now. And, I mean, just adapt to your players. Okay? Because as good as a manager as he's been, I mean, what have you done for me lately, basically? Okay? And it's not much. So, we'll see what ends up happening with them this season. But, nonetheless, I mean, they should be doing a whole lot more. I'll just say that. All right? So, we're going to wrap it up here. Next up, we're going to be talking about Liverpool, so stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. back to the GSMC Soccer Podcast. We spent the first segment talking about Ozil and Germany, and the second segment talking about Manchester United. Now, we move on to Liverpool. All right. And Liverpool just finished off their season. All right. Ended up finishing fourth right below Tottenham. I mean, that was pretty much due in part to the fact that Liverpool were... Looking forward to the Champions League final, resting their players, making sure they're healthy for that match. 
rather than finishing above Tottenham. All right. If Liverpool really cared about it, I'm sure they would have finished above. Okay. But either way, nonetheless, them going to the Champions League final was a big step in them returning back to being one of the top teams in England. Okay. I mean, you got a breakout star in Mohamed Salah, who, I mean, Chelsea didn't really want him. They sent him over to Florentina, played well there, ended up making his way over back into the Premier League with Liverpool, and, I mean, erupted for an absurd season last year. All right. Liverpool had um, a preseason match against Dortmund yesterday, I believe it was. And Christian Pulisic ripped him to shreds. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what the Liverpool lineup was for that. But nonetheless, I mean, Pulisic is a guy who's been linked to that team. Okay. And I know the U.S. fans were going absolutely crazy for it. All right. They got to play... I believe it is Manchester. Yeah, they're playing Manchester City on Wednesday. All right. But nonetheless, yeah, Pulisic had two goals and an assist though against them. And like I said, Pulisic has been linked to Liverpool for like, let's say probably maybe the last couple of seasons. Okay. Klopp thinks highly of him. I mean, it seems that Pulisic is looking to make that big club move. It's just a matter of to where. All right. I think Liverpool has been the constant name that I've seen. I've seen Manchester United thrown around. I even saw today Madrid being thrown around. There's no way that Pulisic... Um, there's no way that Pulisic ends up going to Madrid. There's absolutely no way there. All right. But either way, I mean... I wouldn't say that it's a no-go. All right. But with Liverpool, like I said, last season they did well. Now you're just at the point where you want to keep competing with the best. Okay. You don't want to pretty much slip back. All right. Let me see if I could find the year they finished second with Gerard. Was that the 2000? No, that was the year Leicester ended up winning. It might have been 14, 15 season or the year after that, I believe. I can't remember exactly. All right. Oh, I believe that was... Yeah, it was 2013-2014. All right. They ended up finishing second there. Of course, that was the year where Steven Gerrard had his slip. Demba Ba ended up scoring that goal. All right. I mean, that year, Liverpool were probably one of the best attacking teams. All right. Probably, yeah, they were the best. Suarez had 31 goals that season. Sturridge had 22. And then assists, you had Gerrard with 11. Suarez with 10. All right. It was a bit ridiculous how well they did there. The next season, they end up finishing 6th. The year after that, they end up finishing 8th. Okay, 16-17 season, they finished 4th. And then this past season, of course, they finished 4th once again. Alright, so basically my point here is they had a year where they were one of the best teams in the Premier League and had an opportunity to win it. Okay, you shouldn't go from that to finishing 6th or 8th the next season. Alright. It should be a point where you're pretty much keeping yourself at the top amongst those teams. Okay, and the point, like I said, I'm trying to make here is Liverpool just playing the Champions League final. You don't want to go backwards, which they've done. Okay, talking about that year they finished second, they went backwards the year after that. All right. I mean, you got Mo Salah. Okay, you ended up bringing, um, extending him. He's not going anywhere. And, I mean, you're pretty much returning the same team you had last year, except now you're adding some players. Okay, adding guys like Allison and all that. Looking at their squad right now, they got Salah, Firmino, Mane, added Shakiri. I mean, I really like that move right there. Okay, you got Sturridge still. Con- or, uh, Klopp says that Sturridge can fight for a spot and for some playing time. All right. I mean, Sturridge had that that great season um, that year they finished second, but since then has been kind of not great. All right. So you got him. Midfield, you got Keita. Going to be a solid player for them. Should be a starter there. Fabinho they ended up buying. All right. Oxlade Chamberlain played well with that team. He ended up hurting his, I think it was his knee. So he ended up missing the rest of the season, but nonetheless, I think he'll have a decent year. Wijnaldum, still got Henderson and all that. Okay, and as far as the defense, Alexander Arnold, the young player, now 19. I mean, had a decent season last year. I mean, now, I mean, all you can do is basically improve. 
All right, Van Dyke, who was absolutely ridiculous with them. Okay, Robertson, Matip, who got hurt, I believe it was, in that um, in that how do you say Dortmund game on Monday, on Sunday, I believe it was. He's leaving there, but nonetheless, I mean, he's a decent player. All right, and you got Leverin, who according to him, I think mean, he thinks he's one of the best defenders in the world because he led Liverpool to the Champions League final and Croatia to the World Cup final. I think we remembered a little bit different. I think it was other players leading both of those teams to the finals. But nonetheless, Leverin did have a decent season last year. All right. And of course, now they add Allison. And I mean, Liverpool have needed a goalie of this quality for such a long time. They went with Mingale for a while. That wasn't working out. Howler after howler. And then you got Karius, who I think for the most part had a real good season with Liverpool. All right. If not for those two mistakes in the Champions League final, he's probably their starting goalkeeper this season. All right. But nonetheless, I mean, it still seems that he's still dealing with that. I mean, there was even a preseason game he had for Liverpool this summer where the ball gets um, kicked into the kick towards him. All right. He fumbles it off the chest, and one of the opposition players ends up kicking it into the back of the net. I mean, stuff like that does affect you long term if you let it. All right. But either way, I mean, Liverpool, the team I just read you right now, can, dare I say it, win the Premier League. Okay, like I said in the last segment, City are the favorites, and I'd say after that, I'm guessing it's probably between United and Liverpool. All right, for who has the second best thoughts. Okay. Tottenham right now are kind of scaring me with the way they're running their transfer window. All right. I don't think they've really done enough. And... As far as like Chelsea and all that, Chelsea I don't really see doing too much this season. Like they'll be decent, but nonetheless, they won't be winning the title. Arsenal, I like what they're doing, but give it a give it a couple years for Arsenal. All right, I like this little new era that they're heading in. All right. But either way, like I said, the goal for Liverpool this season is not to go backwards. Okay, I'm not saying they got to make the Champions League final. This season and win the Premier League. But nonetheless, show that yes, we are a team to be reckoned with. And we will be here at the top for years to come. Okay, because I think soccer is better when you got Liverpool and United pretty much performing at their top levels. Okay, those are historic teams right there. You want to see historic teams do well. That's why I wanted to see Liverpool and Madrid in the final. Two very historic teams there. Okay. And I mean... Liverpool weren't terrible in that Champions League final, looking back at it. I believe the final score was 3-1. But either way, I mean, Mo Salah doesn't get hurt. It's probably a completely different game. And if Karius doesn't make those um, terrible mistakes, Madrid's only got one goal. All right? But either way, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how Klopp and this Liverpool team do going forward. All right? I don't really put too much stock into preseason matches or anything like that. Because, frankly, I mean, it's a bunch of second-team players. Sometimes you'll have the first-team guys out there. But either way, I mean, let's see. Who do Liverpool open up with to start the Premier League season? All right, we talked about um, United opening up with Leicester. Let's see. Liverpool open up with West Ham. West Ham seem like they're turning into Portugal. Okay. I believe they bought, if I'm not mistaken, was it Jao Moutinho? I believe it is from Monaco. They're looking at Pepe. Also, or actually, I'm thinking of Wolves. I got that completely mixed up. Excuse me there. All right. West Ham actually brought on Jack Wilshere. All right. Well, yeah, I got Wolves and West Ham mixed up. By the way, open up with West Ham. West Ham, their biggest signing so far this transfer window, I'm guessing, had to be Filippo. As far as price was Felipe Anderson. All right. Also, like I said, they brought on Jack Wilshere. I think he's going to be a nice player for them. West Ham last season were disappointing, to say the least. All right. They ended up finishing 13th on the table. I mean, with their transfer window last season, you expected them to do a whole lot better. Obviously, that didn't happen. I mean, that's how it was for a lot of teams. So, like, Everton brought a lot of players on, but nonetheless struggled. Okay. But either way, like I said, Liverpool, they open up with West Ham on August 12th. All right, that's going to be at Anfield. So we'll see how they do this season. I mean, I figure they'll finish top four easily. 
Okay, as far as right now, my top four teams, I'd say United City, and this isn't in order. Okay, United City, Liverpool, and I'm assuming it's going to be Arsenal or Tottenham. And with the way Arsenal have been buying players and who they're bringing in, I mean, I would not be shocked at all if they finished above Tottenham. Okay. So we'll see how it all goes down. But nonetheless, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Next up, we'll be talking about anything else going on in the world of football slash soccer. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. And welcome back to the GSMC Soccer Podcast. So far today, we have talked about Mesut Ozil and his problems with Germany. I mean, it seems like Germany's got problems with him also. Okay. We've also talked about Manchester United and Liverpool. Now, for the fourth segment, we talk about anything else going on in the world of soccer or football. All right. Now we're at the point where, I mean, like I said, teams are playing their preseason matches, but we're really going to see who's getting transferred where and who's staying where, okay? Over at Chelsea, Hazard, in Hazard, it's a big name to watch for, all right? One of the best players in the world, and when I say that, I'm not saying he's on Ronaldo or Messi's level, but nonetheless, is one of the best dribblers in the world and probably one of the most dangerous wingers in the world, okay? He could be making a move soon. He hinted at it. After the World Cup. Okay. And I feel like when stuff like that happens. I mean we saw it with Ronaldo after the Champions League final. Ronaldo basically hinted at. Yeah I'm leaving. Okay. Everyone tried to deny it. And say no he was going to be staying and all. But of course he did end up leaving to Juventus. Okay. And I'm sure there's some Chelsea fans out there. Who believe that Hazard is going to be staying. But Hazard after the World Cup says that he's most likely going to be leaving. All right. And then he's probably leaving. All right. I mean, it's Real Madrid. What do you think? They they can't offer Chelsea something Chelsea would accept? Okay. All Madrid's got to do is write a check and be done with it. All right. I do think he will end up in Madrid. And if he does, I really hope they end up getting Mbappe there. All right. We will say, oh, Mbappe's a winger. Yeah, he could play up top too. Okay. But either way, I mean, also, Willian is someone who could be leaving that team. I think Willian is definitely going to be one who's leaving. I think he'll probably end up with Barcelona. Okay. They've been negotiating his price and all that. I think Barcelona is eventually going to reach that price and buy him. But either way, as far as Hazard goes, I do think he will be playing for Madrid this season. All right. And I do think it's just something. I think Hazard is ready for a new challenge. All right. I mean... I feel like he, I don't want to say he's peaked with Chelsea either way, but I mean, you don't stay at Chelsea and not go to Madrid. Okay. I mean, Madrid's the biggest club in the world. So, we'll see what ends up happening there with Chelsea. I mean, basically the guys that, it's Willian and Hazard, I think, are the ones who are going to be leaving. Okay, and let me see. Let me look at Chelsea's squad for this season. All right, see what they currently are working with. Because I mean, you lose Hazard, and um, you lose Hazard and William. Those are two big spots you got to fill back. All right, so right now they got Hazard, Morata. All right, Pedro still there. Giroud, who Giroud's been getting a lot. Well, Giroud was questioned a lot as far as his World Cup performances. Okay, didn't score a goal in that tournament. And I think if you were watching the way France were playing, I think that Giroud was 
doing basically what he needed to tactically. Okay, because when you got Griezmann and Mbappe, they're going to be the ones getting the goals. I think that watching Giroud, yeah, he didn't score or whatever, but I think that was just all tactics. Tactics, okay? I do think he did put in decent performances in the World Cup, and I think he deserves that trophy just as much as anyone else does. All right? But either way, I mean, he did well with um, with Chelsea last season, scoring a bunch of goals. I'm sure he'll be up top again. All right? Then in the midfield for Chelsea, I mean, they got Jorginho and Conte. Chelsea could be very good this season because of their midfield. All right? You get Fabregas still there. Ross Barkley, the I'd say the most overrated English player I've ever seen. Okay. I mean, I remember when he was just starting up with Everton, posed as this young phenom kid. Obviously, didn't work out there. I mean, Barkley's still tw- only 24, so I mean, he's still got time, but either way, I mean, uh, I don't know. All right. Yeah, Drinkwater's still there. Moses on the wing back, all right, along with Alonzo. I'm curious to see if Rudiger gets more time this season. All right. I think he's a very good defender. Didn't have the best World Cup game for Germany when he did come in. Okay, I believe that was the, I believe that was the Sweden game, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, but either way, I mean, if Chelsea lose Hazard and and Willian, those are two spots, big spots they got to fill. Will they? Yes. I'm just not sure if they're gonna be able to replace the production that those two brought. Okay, but I mean, they will be getting a lot of money back for the, both of those players. So I mean, there is a possibility that they do bring in some quality. Okay, but let's see what else is currently going on in the world of football. All right, Mbappe tried getting Conte to pretty much warm up to the idea of him going to PSG. Okay. And if Conte were to go to PSG, my opinion of them would change big time. Conte is a team-changing player. Meaning, you bring him into your squad, you're going to tell the difference immediately. Okay. So Mbappe had an interview with France Football. Says that the PSG chairman is interested in signing Conte. Okay, but... I mean... If you're Chelsea, you can't let a player like Conte go. He's the best defensive midfielder in the world. Okay, it's ridiculous how well he plays. But, I mean, like I said, Mbappe's talking to Conte about it. Conte, why not go play in your home country, in France? Okay. But this is one I don't see happening at all this summer. Alright. This is more so Mbappe, I guess, just trying to kick the tires on it. And I mean, Conte's got three seasons left on his... Chelsea contract too. Alright. So I don't really I don't see that I don't see that move happening. Alright, even though the rumors have been pretty strong about it. And then one player too, I'm curious to see what happens with him is Martial. Alright, of Manchester United. Chelsea want him. Bayern Munich want him. And I saw also Borussia Dortmund want him. Okay. Martial, I mean, if he plays more for Manchester United this season, he's on the World Cup roster for France. All right? He's a very good player. There's just a point where Mourinho, I guess, just didn't want him out there. Okay, or at least didn't see a fit for him on that team. All right, for his 11. Okay. But either way, Martial is a real great player. And I think it's Martial who wants out more than Mourinho wants him out if he does. Okay. Martial, when Van Hall bought him, everyone was talking about, oh, you bought him for 70 million. What kind of absurd price is that? I mean, no one even knew who he was. All right. Then he erupted in his first season, had an amazing first season. And since then, it's like, it seems like he's been trying to find his consistency, but you can't do that when you're often on the pitch. Okay. So I do see him going too. And, I mean, there's going to be a lot of players going different places this transfer window. I mean, we already saw Ronaldo going to Juventus. That's probably the craziest one that's happened so far, I'd say. And I saw, too, that Juventus have already sold, I believe, it was the figure was $60 million in Ronaldo jerseys. Okay. They bought him for 100 That's ridiculous. All right. But either way, I think we're going to wrap it up for today. There's not much going on, else going on in the world of football. All right, we just got the preseason matches going on. Wednesday, we got Juventus versus Bayern Munich. Benfica versus Dortmund. Liverpool versus City. 
Tottenham versus Roma, and then United versus Milan. All right. So thanks for listening to the GSMC Soccer Podcast. As always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. I will be back next Monday, so stay tuned, and I will talk to you guys later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program